A very good day to you wherever you are. My name's Lawrence Tratt and I'm going to present joint work with Lucas Diekmann on making better, fewer syntax errors for LR parsers. Now imagine I wake up one day and decide to do some programming in my favourite programming language, which for now, let's assume is Java. I fire up my trusty text editor and start typing in some code. I save my file and compile it with Java C. Astute viewers have probably already realised that I've made a syntax error, which Java C has pointed out happened on line 2. It's even told us where within the line the error happened, just after the X character. Java C has then tried to recover from the syntax error, and it's assumed that what I really meant to do was put a semicolon after X because, after all, int X semicolon is valid Java. However, that makes the next portion of the input Y semicolon, which is not valid Java syntax, and so we end up with a spurious second syntax error. This very simple example highlights the problem with error recovery. Programmers soon realise that they can rely only on the location of the first error, not its fix, nor on any subsequent errors reported. In this video, I'm going to show you that we can do better by introducing the CPCT plus algorithm. It's grammar neutral, it presents multiple repairs to the user, runs fast enough to be usable, and is implemented as part of the open source YAC compatible library gram tools. My aim here isn't to show you every possible technical detail or list every challenge, but to give you a flavour of what's going on so that you can look at the paper in more depth. Gram Tools is mostly used as a YAC replacement, but there's also a handy command line debugging utility which is useful for our purposes. Let's see what happens when I give it the Java Lex and YAC files and our example Java input. It first prints out the parse tree, which we're not interested in the moment, and then it shows us the three repair sequences it found for this input. It says the input could be equivalent to either int x equals y semicolon, or int x semicolon, or int x comma y semicolon. All of those are equally valid. Now, just to be clear, Gram Tools and CPCT Plus are happy with multiple um, syntax errors in a file, so let's see what happens if we do that. We'll make some random uh, syntax errors and save those and run that again. And here we can see the three syntax errors I made have all been repaired. And the way that Gram Tools and CPCT Plus work is by taking the first repair sequence at each point applying it to the input and carrying on and trying to continue parsing. To be clear, GramTools and CPCT Plus know no more about a language's semantics other than that expressed by the grammar. So, if for example I have a Lua file lurking around, and if, as I luckily happen to have, uh, a Lua grammar lurking around, then I can just as easily repair the syntax errors in the Lua file or indeed any other file for which I have a grammar. Hopefully those simple examples gave you a sense that CPCT Plus often does a fairly good job, but I'm not foolish enough to pretend that it's perfect. For one, it's inherently based on LR parsing. If you don't like or can't use LR parsing, then I think that's a terrible shame for various reasons, amongst them that you can't use CPCT Plus. Also, there is no intention that the error recovery in CPCT Plus can match that of handwritten parsers. They know far more about a language's semantics and can do far more clever things than CPCT Plus can ever hope to do. Rather, CPCT Plus aims to give fairly good error recovery to all LR grammars. This is the YAC grammar of the simple calculator language we'll use throughout this video. A quick reminder of some terminology first. Grammars consist of one or more rules, rules have names, and map to one or more productions. Symbols reference either rules or tokens. An LR parser takes in such a grammar, converts it to a state graph, and then to a state table, which is a state machine upon which various operations are defined. From that, one can start passing real input. LR parsing is a beautiful algorithm, efficient and suited to many computing languages. However, we are most interested in the empty cells in the state table as they denote error conditions and are when error recovery is invoked. 
Error recovery in our context relies on an appealing property of LR parsers, which is that they stop as soon as an error has been encountered. And then we can use the error recovery approach of our choice. We've already seen the synchronization token approach in Java, which searches for or inserts semicolons, but there are other alternatives, most notably panic mode. Our formulation of panic mode comes from Holub. As you can see, the algorithm is incredibly simple. It runs incredibly fast. But it works by deleting parts of the parsing stack, often causing it to skip large portions of input and leading to poor quality repairs. Honestly, neither of these approaches is very appealing, which is probably why LR parsing has a poor reputation for error recovery. But there is a third category of error recovery approaches, which I will refer to as the Fisher et al family. They all derive from this seminal paper, but I'll take as my starting point this much more recent paper, and it's from that that ultimately we derived the CPCT plus algorithm. Error recovery algorithms in the Fisher et al family work by finding sequences of repairs. In our case, repairs can be insert a token, delete a token at the current point, or shift a token at the current point, i.e. leave it unchanged. Unfortunately, error recovery approaches are often rather vague about how they should best be implemented, but we soon realize there are a couple of fairly obvious choices. We model the search as an instance of Dijkstra's algorithm, and we use a simple list of lists to represent the queue. We can then semi-formalize the Corchuelo et al algorithm as you see above. The queue consists of configurations, where configuration has a parsing stack, the remaining input, and a repair sequence. The main search takes the next lowest cost configuration from the queue and operates upon it. If that configuration has reached an accept state in the state table, or passed enough input successfully where that's a fixed integer, we found a successful configuration and return it. If the configuration has ranged over too much of the input without success, we discard it. Otherwise, we gather the configuration's neighbors and insert them in the queue. If we've exhausted the queue, the search overall is unsuccessful. The second major part of the Corchuelo et al algorithm is gathering a configuration's neighbors, which is presented as a reduction relation to create delete repairs, insert repairs, and shift repairs. Now, undoubtedly, I'm partly showing you this to convince you there's some real rigor in the paper, but there's also a serious point. The CR shift one rule contains a flaw which can be seen in these two parts. It tries to create multiple shift repairs in one go to make the search quicker. However, that means it misses intermediate configurations which lead to success. In the paper, we have an intermediate and a full fix, and I'll just show you the latter, which is the CR shift 3 rule. CR shift 3 generates a lot of additional configurations which cause a lot of extra work for the search. Is it worth it? Well, consider the input 23 plus for our calculator grammar where a syntax error is found in the digit 3. CR shift 1 finds no repairs for this input but CR shift 3 finds six repair sequences. And it's at this point we can formalize an important property of CPCT+. It presents the complete set of minimum cost repair sequences to the user, the first approach in the Fisher et al family to attempt to do so. Because CPCT+, often does a lot more work than previous approaches, we soon realized that we needed to optimize it. For example, the search often generates vast numbers of variable size configurations. The naive representation of those uses one vector on the heap for the parsing stack and another vector for the repair sequence. When we gather that configuration's neighbors, we often end up duplicating that information in new vectors. Instead, we use parent pointer trees to represent both the parsing stack and repair sequences. When we gather that configuration's neighbors, we can effectively reuse most of those elements in memory. This is a big saving both in terms of memory use, but also in terms of wall clock time. A very different optimization was needed to make the creation of the complete set of minimum cost repair sequences tolerable for the hardest examples. Our solution is to merge compatible configurations, so we have to do less work in the search. There are various rules about what a compatible configuration is, but the real challenge is to find a potentially compatible configuration quickly. To do that, we reuse an often forgotten facet of a classic computing data type. First, we change the queue from a list of lists to a list of hash sets. And then we rely on the fact that hashing behavior need only be a subset of equality behavior. Combine that with some more use of parent pointer trees and you have an extremely effective optimization. 
the complete set of minimum cost repair sequences has the potential to overload the user with too much information. Consider this Java example where a syntax error is found at the Y token. When used gram tools, a single repair sequence is ultimately presented to users, even though the core of CPCT Plus generated three repair sequences. The reason for this is that the search is inherently local in nature, it's too computationally expensive to let it range over the whole file. However, having whittled things down to a handful of repair sequences, we can then let them pass further ahead and see what happens. In this case, the question mark and open bracket repair sequences both cause a subsequent syntax error, where the comma repair sequence doesn't. We therefore rank the comma repair higher than the other two, which are then discarded. So, is CPCT Plus fast enough and good enough to be usable? To find out, we created a large-scale experiment using 200,000 real-world syntactically incorrect Java files from the Black Box project. We set a timeout of half a second because we think most users will tolerate error recovery taking up to that amount at the absolute maximum. Some of the core results can then be seen above, and let's dive into a couple of details. CPCT Plus's average running time is about 3x better than Corchuelo et al, even though CPCT Plus is doing a lot more work by creating the complete set of minimum cost repair sequences. However, when you see panic mode running time, you might wonder whether all that extra work is worthwhile. If we look over at the right, we can see for each approach how many syntax errors they identified in our corpus of 200,000 files. Panic mode identified 981,000 syntax errors but CPCT Plus only identified 435,000 syntax errors. This convincingly shows that panic mode is often creating such bad repairs that it causes a slew of subsequent and spurious passing errors. But you might notice that Corchuelo et al is identifying rather fewer error locations than CPCT Plus. The reason for that can be seen in the failure rate column, which tells us for our corpus how many files this approach was unable to fully repair within the timeout. Corchuelo et al failed on about 5.5% of files, whereas CPCT Plus only failed on about 1.6%. In other words, Corchuelo et al weren't able to pass all of the corpus and identify all of the syntax errors. But I think, ultimately, the most important thing to take away from this is that CPCT Plus has a good average running time and a low failure rate. However, good performance is only worthwhile if the overall approach is usable in practice, and unfortunately most previous approaches don't appear to have put much thought into that. But since we created an open source Rust library, we were forced to confront the question of how to make error recovery usable in practice. What you're looking at now is a Yak calculator grammar extended with GramTools compatible actions. And if I run this, we can see that the calculator evaluates normal expressions as we would expect. But in the presence of syntax errors, it can choose either to continue evaluation or not, depending on the semantic consequences of the syntax error. The point here isn't to worry too much about the code, but to see that it's possible to have a natural interface to error recovery and its consequences. So let's summarize what we've seen in this video. The CPCT Plus error recovery algorithm works on any LR grammar. It presents the complete set of minimum cost repair sequences to user, and it runs fast enough that it's usable. It's also implemented as part of an open source Rust library gram tools. However, there's nothing particularly Rust specific about CPCT Plus, and I believe that it could be easily ported to other languages' YAC systems. I'd like to thank EPSRC in the UK for funding the research that made this possible, and I'm going to finish by pointing you at the GitHub repository for gram tools. Thank you very much for watching.